Erev Shabbat Shalom Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yumi Mesechet Orla, we are up to Perek Alf Mishnah Vav, today's Mishnah should be Le'in Nishmat, Neria Ben Svedlana Aran Bay, Ben Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. The Mishnah is going to continue its discussion of the Bitul, of the nullification of Orla in 200, Netiyah Shel Orla Bishel Kilei HaKerem Shenitarvu Ben Etiyot, if a young tree of Orla or of Kilaim of the vineyard, became mixed with other trees so that the grower does not know which tree is the forbidden one. And just as a background, we know if grain or the like is planted near a grapevine, both the grain and the vine become climb of the vineyard and are forbidden for all benefit. Like the Torah tells us in Zebo Dvarim chapter 22, Pasuk 9, and Mishnayot Meseret Kelaim chapter 8, Mishnah 1, just like the Ola fruits. And like the Ola fruits, Kelaim of the vineyard become nullified in a mixture if the permitted part is at least 200 times the forbidden part. So the Mishnah now says, let's say it became mixed with other trees so that you don't know which tree is the forbidden one. In the case of Ola, the grower forgot which tree was less than three years old. In the case of Kanaim of the vineyard, the grain was later removed and the farmer cannot tell near which vine it grew. The Mishnah says one may not pick fruit from any of the mixed trees even if the permitted trees are 200 times the forbidden one. Now, the halacha is, the law is, that something significant, the bar chashuv, does not become nullified. So something connected to the ground is considered significant in this regard. So therefore, the forbidden tree and its fruits do not become nullified among the permitted trees and their fruits, even if there are 200 times as many. Therefore, the Mishnah says that one may not pick any of the fruits to eat them, because when there is no bitul, the entire mixture is Forbidden. Now something is called a mixture even if each piece is separate as long as we do not know which piece is which. Now if one would pick some of the fruit, that fruit would really become nullified in the majority of fruits because it's no longer attached and therefore no longer significant. However, one may not purposely nullify forbidden thing in a mixture and that's what the Mishnah here says, one may not pick any of the fruit. But if he did pick some fruit, it becomes nullified in 201, meaning if there are 200 times as many permitted fruit as there are forbidden fruits. Now, where there are 200 times as much permitted fruit, the forbidden fruit should really become nullified while still on the tree, except for the fact that the attached fruit is the Vachashub significant and it cannot be nullified. But now that a fruit was picked and is no longer attached, it can and does become nullified even if it's from a forbidden, even if it's from the forbidden tree, and Maran speaks about this more in Cherek Yehudah, Siman 101, Halacha 7. Ubilvad Shiloni itkaven nilkot. The Mishnah says, provided that he did not intend to pick the fruits in order to cause them to become nullified, because if someone purposely nullifies a forbidden thing in a mixture, the rabbis decree that he may not eat the mixture, even though the forbidden thing is now technically nullified, and therefore the Mishnah says that the picked fruit is permitted only if the person did not intend to nullify it by picking it, like where he mistakenly thought that the forbidden fruit was nullified in 200, even while still on a tree. But, if he picked it knowing that this would make it nullified, it remains asur. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says, Af He may even intend to pick them and they will become nullified in 201 because Rabbi Yossi holds that the usual rabbinic prohibition against intentional nullification, it does not apply in this case. Therefore, he permits the person to pick the fruit even though this will make it nullified. Now, the reason for Rabbi Yossi's logic is that there's a general rule that the rabbis make their decrees only for common cases. It is common for some forbidden food to become mixed indistinguishably with permitted food. So for such cases, the rabbis decreed that one may not add more permitted food to the mixture in order to nullify what's forbidden. But Rabbi Yossi holds, it is not common for a person to forget which tree is Ola or Kilaim for this could cause the surrounding trees to become forbidden. And therefore, in the rare case that a person did forget, the rabbis, according to Rabbi Yossi, did not decree that he may not cause the forbidden fruit to become nullified by picking the fruit. And Rabbi Yossi therefore says, you may even intend to pick them and they will become nullified in 201. But the Rav says, Ven ki Rabbi Yossi, the Alachat does not follow Rabbi Yossi. And that is an Abotai of Mishnah Vav. 
Mishnah Zayin now discusses the Torah specifies in the Torah prohibition Varaltem Orlato et Prio. You shall treat its fruit as close, forbidden. Seva Vayikra chapter 19, Pasuk 23. So this teaches that only the fruit of, of an Ola tree is forbidden. So this Mishnah is going to discuss which edible parts of an Ola tree or vine are considered fruit. Ha'alim Valulavim Ume Gifanim Usmadar Utarim Ba'ula. The leaves, the shoots, the waters of vines, the water of vines, and the buds are permitted in the case of Ola. Now, when it says leaves, the Mishnah means even leaves are somewhat edible. When we say shoots, we're talking about young branches that are soft and somewhat edible. Now, water of vines is the liquid that oozes from a vine when it's cut during the spring. When we say bud, that's the flower bud that will eventually develop into a grape. These are not classified as fruits, and therefore they are not forbidden as ola, ubari va'i, and they may be eaten without restriction. In the case of rivai, the Torah says that while the fruit of the first three years is forbidden as ola, ubashana rivi'it yekul peyokud shurim la Hashem. In the fourth year, all its fruit shall be sanctified to praise Hashem. In Sefer Vayikra, chapter nineteen, pasuk twenty-four, meaning the fruit of the fourth year or its redemption money shall be brought to Yerushalayim to be consumed there. So here too, the Torah specified. Fruit. Therefore, the law does not apply to the fourth year leaves, shoots, vine water, or buds. And the Mishnah says they are permitted, meaning they may be eaten anywhere without being redeemed. Ubanazir, and in the case of Banazir, the Torah says that if someone becomes an Azir, miyain v'shechar yazir, from new or aged wine, he shall abstain. Chometz yain v'chometz shechar lo yishte, and he shall not drink vinegar or wine, uh, uh, vinegar of wine or vinegar. Of aged wine, the whole mishrat anavim lo yishte. Anything which grapes have been soaked, he shall not drink. Vanavim lachim bevishim lo yochel. And fresh and dry grapes, he shall not eat. Kol yemei nizro mikol esher yaseh migefan yain mecharzanim vaatzag lo yochal. Right, all the days of his nizirut, anything made from the grapevine, even the pits or skin, he shall not eat. Sefer Bamidbar, chapter six, pesukim three and four. Since the Torah gives the prohibition in terms of he shall not eat, it applies only to those parts of the grapevine that are normally eaten. This excludes the leaves, shoots, vine water, buds, which though are somewhat edible, are not normally eaten. Vasurim ba'ashera, but the Mishnah says they are forbidden in the case of an ashera. An ashera is a tree worshipped as an idol. And the Torah commands about idols, veloid bak b'yadcham and no part of the banned property may adhere to your hands. Selot Varim chapter 13, Pasuk 18. Meaning, you shall not derive benefit from any part of it. And therefore, the prohibition applies to any part of the Asherah, not just to its fruit. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says he disagrees about the buds. Hasmadar asur mipneshu peri. The bud is forbidden in all cases, even in the case of Orla, Rivai, and Azir, because it's considered a fruit, unlike the Tanakama, who does not consider the buds to be fruit. Rabbi Yossi considers them to be fruit. Therefore, they are subject to all these prohibitions, just like any other fruit that is normally eaten. Rabbi Yezer Omer, Rabbi Yezer says, Hama'amid bisraf ha'ula asur. If one curls milk, with the sap of Ola, the cheese is forbidden. And the Mepharshim explain, cheese is made by adding a curdling agent to milk, which causes the milk solids to separate from the liquid and form cheese. Tree sap can be used as a curdling agent because sap is a sticky, sticky substance, different from the vine water that we mentioned earlier. Rebbe Lezels holds that sap is considered one of the fruits of a tree and therefore subject to the Ola prohibition. And therefore, if a person uses the sap of an Ola tree to make cheese, the cheese is forbidden. Again, the Mishnah says, Rabbi Yezer Omer, Rabbi Yezer says, Hamamid bisraf Ola asur, if one curdles milk with the sap of Ola, the cheese is forbidden. Amar Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua says, Shamati bipirusha ma'amid bisraf e'alim bisraf e'ikarim mutar. I heard explicitly that if one curls milk with the sap of the leaves of an ola tree or with the sap of the trunk, the cheese is permitted because such a sap is not considered fruit. But if he curls milk with the sap of the unripe fruits, then the cheese is forbidden because they are considered fruit. Again, just a different, um, diff, uh, different, uh, not teaching us that not all saps are the same. And the Rab does tell us, the Rabbi Yeshua, about which sap, and just 
on the previous note, the Rav says, and the Nachak Rabbi Yossi, Velo Ki Rabbi Eliezer, the Alcha did not follow Rabbi Yossi regarding the buds, how he forbade the bud in all cases, and the Alcha does not follow Rabbi Eliezer about curdling milk with the sap of Ula, the Alcha does follow Rabbi Yoshua. That is in the Botai of today's Mishnah Everybody should have a Yerim Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen Amen.